All right, so now we're going to discuss moments and centers of masses and centroids. <laughs> the first thing I want to do is I want to define for you what a moment is. So this is the definition of a moment M about a point P. So the moment, the moment is going to be equal to M, which is the mass of the object, times x, which is the length of the moment arm. So m is the mass of the object, and x is the length of the moment arm. So for instance, if you have a, a 20 kilogram weight, and that 20 kil kilogram weight is a distance of, let's say, two meters from some point in space. If you want to calculate the moment of this 20 kilogram mass here about that point, then what you do is you take the 20 kilograms and you multiply it by the length of the moment arm, that's the distance from the mass to the point, and you find out that the moment here is 40, and that would be kilogram uh, meters. So 40 kilogram meters. So that's how you calculate the moment uh, of a mass about a point. Now let's take a look at a simple example here. Let's say we have a seesaw. We all remember seesaws from childhood on the playground. So we have a seesaw, and over here, I have a child that is 30 kilograms. And that child is two meters away from the uh, pivot point of the seesaw, which is called the fulcrum. Basically, the moment of this 30 kilogram mass about that fulcrum, that point right there, is two times 30 or 60 kilogram meters. All right, now let's say we have another child over here, a smaller child who's only 20 kilograms. And that child is the same distance away because it's a seesaw. But because we're calling this the origin, we're gonna say that this is negative two meters. If this is zero, then that's positive two, negative two. So the length of the seesaw is four meters, but the fulcrum, the pivot point, is uh, two meters from each child. Well, the thing is, we know that in this scenario, this seesaw, teeter-totter, is actually going to rotate clockwise. And it's going to rotate clockwise because this child is heavier than this child, and they are the same distance away. So the calculation here would be, well, the moment of this child about that point is going to be 20 times negative 2, which is negative 40. And the moment of this child about that same point is going to be 30 times 2, or 60. Now, there is something called the moment about the origin. This would be the origin right here. The, uh, zero on the x-axis. The moment about the origin, m0, is actually given by this formula. It's going to be m1 x1, which is the moment for the first mass, uh, the mass itself times the length of the, uh, the moment arm, plus m2 x2, that's the length of the second mass, or sorry, the, the, the mass of the second object multiplied by the length of the moment arm for the second object, and then plus, that, 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 plus, all the way up to the, let me see, the nth mass, the nth ma mass times the length of the nth moment arm. So this calculation will give you what's called the moment about the origin. Now, if this moment about the origin is equal to zero, if you calculate this and you get zero, 
That means your system is in equilibrium, and this, the the uh, the system will not rotate clockwise or counterclockwise. So when a system is in equilibrium, the moment about the origin is equal to zero, meaning the tendency of this system to rotate is zero. This system has zero tendency to rotate. So for our particular problem, if we calculate the moment about the origin, well, there are only two masses. The first mass is 20, and the length of that moment arm is negative 2, plus the second mass is 30, and the length of that moment arm is positive 2, so that the calculation I'm doing here for the uh, moment about the origin is going to be negative 40 plus 60, or the moment is actually the moment about the origin is actually 20. Now, the moment about the origin does not equal zero for this system, which means that this system has a tendency to rotate. In this case, this has a tendency to rotate in a clockwise fashion. So that is the moment about the origin. Now, for a system that's not in equilibrium like this one, we can always find a point that we can place this fulcrum, that we can place this pivot point, that, this, that would create equilibrium for this system. So basically, if we take this middle point of the seesaw and move it a little bit to the right, we can actually put this system into equilibrium. All right, that point that we would have to move the fulcrum to in order to get equilibrium is called the center of mass. So for a system that's not in equilibrium, meaning the moment about the origin is not equal to zero, you can put it in equilibrium by relocating the fulcrum. And the place that you relocate the fulcrum in order to put the system in equilibrium is called the center of mass. All right. So let's take a look at this system and see if we can find the center of mass. Uh, the center of mass, let me get rid of this too. The center of mass is going to be denoted x bar. The center of mass we're going to denote x bar and it's actually going to be the distance that I would have to relocate the fulcrum in order to put the system in equilibrium. So let's take a look. Let's take a look back at our number line here. Here's 0 in the middle, here's 1, here's 2. So the 30 kilogram child is here, 30 kilogram, and 1, negative 1, negative 2, the 20 kilogram child is here. And what I want to know is, I want to know where do I have to move this fulcrum to? Where do I have to shift this entire system in order to put this into equilibrium? I'm going to assume that I have to get closer to the heavier child in order to do that. So the distance from zero to where I'm going to relocate my fulcrum, that distance I am going to call x bar. So that distance right there, the distance from the original origin to where I have to relocate the fulcrum of the seesaw in order to put this system in equilibrium, I'm going to call that distance there, I'm going to call that distance x bar. So that distance there is x bar. All right? So let's find out what x bar is. Well, let's calculate each one of these moments. Well, let me see. This child's moment. Well, the child weighs 20 kilograms, and I'm going to multiply that by the distance from that child to the new fulcrum, the relocated fulcrum. Well, that distance is going to be negative 2 plus that little bit of x bar, plus x bar. So the distance from this 20 kilogram child to the new fulcrum is negative 2 plus x bar. All right, and actually, it should be like this, negative 2 plus x bar. Actually, it's the entire distance. This distance is 2 plus the x bar, but it's negative because it's in that direction. So this is what we actually have here. And then for the second child, well, let me see. That child is 30 kilograms. And I'm going to multiply that. Well, let's see. This distance here. Well, the original distance is 2. 
what I'm actually doing is I'm subtracting x bar from 2. So this one is going to be 2 minus x bar. And what I want, I want this system to be in equilibrium. This that I'm calculating is actually the moment about the origin. And I want that moment about the origin to equal 0, so this system will be in equilibrium. So this is what, this is what I get. 0 is equal to 20 times negative 2 minus x bar plus 30 times 2 minus x bar. All right. So let's go ahead and let's do the calculation here. Well, this is going to be 0 equals, I'm trying to find what x bar is, that distance right there that I have to relocate the fulcrum. This is going to be negative 40 minus 20 x bar plus 60 minus 30 x bar. So I get that expression. And this gives me, let's see, I have a negative 40 and a 60, which is a 20. 20. And then here I have a negative 50, negative 50 x bar, in which case, solving for x bar, I see that x bar is equal to 20 over 50, or 2 fifths, 2 fifths. So that means that if I just shift my fulcrum from 0, 2 fifths, of a meter to the right, this system will be in equilibrium, meaning the moment about the origin will be zero. Let's see if that's actually true. Well, let me see. I have a new system now. The new system that I have actually looks like this. This is going to be my fulcrum. This distance here is actually going to be 2 minus x bar. 2 minus x bar is 2 minus 2 fifths. 2 minus 2 fifths. Well, 2 minus 2 fifths, well, that's 10 over 5 minus 2 over 5, which is 8 over 5. So this distance right here for this moment arm, this length is 8 fifths. 8 fifths of a meter. So the distance to that 30 kilogram child is 8 fifths of a meter. While the other distance, which is actually going to be negative 2 minus x bar, that's negative 2 minus 2 fifths, is actually negative 12 fifths. So the distance from here to here to this 20 kilogram child is actually negative 12 fifths. So if these, if this is the actual system, this thing will not rotate this way or this way. We can calculate the, uh, the moment about the origin this way. Well, the moment about the origin is equal to, well, this, there's this child, which is 20 times negative 12 fifths, plus this child's moment about the uh, point right here, which is 30 times 8 fifths. And when we do this calculation, here we get negative 240 over 5, and here we get positive 240 over 5. So indeed, the moment about the origin is 0 if I place the fulcrum right there, and indeed that means that there is no tendency for this thing to rotate either clockwise or counterclockwise. So this is balanced. This is balanced. And that is... Uh, the beginning of the discussion about moments.